Hi, my name is Michael Kraft. Today I'm gonna show you how you can import product data on Shopify store using the application called Excel-like product bulk edit. In this session I can show you only a few common scenarios since this powerful import tool allows you to import various data of different formats and even do tricks with it. With this app you can import files containing only a part of your catalog. It is not required that you import a full catalog. It is also possible to remove items using import. You can flag items for removal. You can flag particular variants or whole products. Any column that exists in the app main grid is importable. Of course if the field is not read only. Or exportable. So if you for example add a meta field column, it becomes possible to import its value from the import file. Same as you can import rows containing data you want to change, the same stands for columns. You can import only columns for fields you wish to update. It is just required that you have some item identification. Therefore you must include some field, for example like the SKU. To identify products, variants and fields you want to update. ID is the ultimate identificator and the most preferred way to identify a particular product or variant. Unfortunately ID is a bit confusing to people without some IT background. Also a particular ID is valid for one particular site where it was generated. On other sites same products will have different IDs and you cannot take control over that since ID is generated by the system at the moment of item creation. This app uses a parent field, which is a variant referrer for its product, and it is actually the ID of the product. Besides ID and parent fields, for product identification you can use title or handle. Handle is textual secondary identification of product and it is also part of URL. The SKU of one of the product variants can also identify a product. Variant identification can be the SKU, options combination or its barcode. When matching variants app will also respect product fields like handles to narrow down the list of possible candidates. For example, the variant options can be the same for two or more products. In that case the app will first narrow choices to products that match other provided data and then look for the right variant inside of them. If the app still finds multiple choices it will ask the user to specify what goes where. Before I run export I will define one new meta field so I could later use import to fill its values. Ok, column for our new meta field has appeared. We see that it is empty for all products and variants and we will fill it up using our import. Ok, now I'm gonna export all the data. I will then make a few changes and also define data for two new products I would like to add and then import files prepared like that. Here is our file. I'm gonna change some data in this exported file now. First I will change some variant prices now. Okay. 
I will now change some inventory levels. I will also now update the description using search and replace. For demonstration purposes I will just do something easy. Replace all appearances of word and with ampersand. Ok, we also want to demonstrate import of the my meta field meta field. So I will set a few values for that. Finally, let's also add two new products to our import file. You may have noticed that for these new variants we put the letter V in the ID column. This is actually not required, but if you have overlapping SKUs, this can tell the app explicitly that this is row for a new variant, and this should not try to match it to anything else. Please just note that rows for variants must be placed after their product row. I have set image URLs only for variants. App will upload these images for the product and relate variants to it as we have set here. If we want to upload some additional images that are not related to any variants, we would simply put them in the images cell of the product. I will do that now. And we'll set two additional images for my first new product. We will now save our changes. Ok, let's upload our prepared file now. This is the first step of the import wizard. Here we pick our import file, file can be xlsx, csv or ods. Here we see some basic instruction and notes, like this one noting maximal image file size. If we need, here we can tell the app to skip all operations that will result in creation of new items. This checkbox here called use default values, will tell the app to fill up new products and variants with default values. Default product or variant values we can define from the split editor top right menu by picking some product or variant for default one. If we have options entered correctly, we should tick strict options import. Otherwise the app will let us have some missing data or mistakes. Defer images only by name will tell the app that it should not consider the path to the image file and that it should only consider the name of the file itself. For my import I will not change any of these settings because for my current import I don't actually need them. The second step of import is mapping. This is a process of relating columns of the import file. 
to the product properties. We can also turn off certain fields we don't want to import. The app will try to guess mappings by names, but you also have an option of changing that as you need, as sometimes we want to actually do swap or something similar. We can also map columns of the import file to generic features, like We see here we have a field SKU and below it we have replacement SKU. Since SKU is an identification field, we can tell the app that the given value from the import file column is replacement. We can import the file having two columns, old SKU and a new SKU. In that case we would map old SKU to SKU and new SKU to replacement SKU. Also if I scroll this list you see we have a field to mark items for deletion. We also see in this list that for our meta fields we have the option to take value only for variants or products. Since this app can accept many different data formats we can use all this to target import as we need. Ok, this is the preview screen. Before we import we can make sure this is exactly what we wanted to do. The first column app tells us what will happen with this record. So it can be either update, add or delete. We can also make changes directly here. We can also remove records we don't want to import. When we are sure this is what we wanted to do, we can click the commit button. Ok, our import is done. We see that our new data from the import file is here. Now I'm gonna import a simple SKU price and stock file. Here I have prepared a CSV file containing about half of all my test store SKUs. Beside SKU this file contains price and stock level. By the way I will just mention that the app can also manage multi-location stores, ones that have multiple warehouses. For such stores the app will have a stock column for each active warehouse.
Ok, let's import. Ok, we will make sure our columns are mapped correctly. We can proceed to the preview step. We see the app recognized all of our changes of price and stock levels. When we are sure everything is as we want, we then can commit. So in this case, I used import to synchronize prices and stock. I could also use a similar file to update anything else. For example, I could import a file that has SKU and a variant image, or SKU and some custom meta field I use for my products. I could also have some file like this to update product properties. In that case, I could use handle for identification. And for example, I can update images, description, tags, custom collections, or any other field related to the product. Ok, our price and stock field import is completed. We can see our prices and inventory levels are updated successfully. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.